Good morning. Hey guys. So I wanted to come on live today and just change up the location a little bit. So I'm live here from my backyard and I am today again talking about goals, big old fat goals that you have. So this week is week one of the Happy Healthy Fit Book Club. This is my international best-selling book. It's an international bestseller on Amazon. I want to preface that. And um, in three different categories, health and fitness, exercise and nutrition science, and spirituality. Um, Spain, Canada, the United States, Australia, and France. Those are the five countries that my book is a bestseller. So you guys, I just want to thank you for being here today. Thank you for being with me. Um, I'm excited for all of you who are doing this experience, doing this book club, and for all of you who are really ready to tackle your goals and to really eliminate distractions and get going on your goals. And so today, um, I'm going to put this down for a little bit and I'm just gonna talk to you about mindset and focus. We're gonna get more into the neuroscience of the brain next week in happy section, that's in week two. Um, and you do need to download the workbook. And so right now the workbook is all on goals, goal setting. So I want you to identify three different goals that you have that you want for your life and, and strategically start to plan out what you're willing to do to get those goals. And that was in yesterday's video and also in the worksheet that you can get by going to LizNearsWiki.com and signing up for my newsletter. Um, don't mind the little Jack Russell Terrier over here that's barking. Uh, hopefully he lets him in. Um, so that is the goal setting worksheet. But today I'm going to talk to you about mindset and really truly how I as a single mother have been so successful with starting multiple businesses. Um, I started my first business, big business, you guys, 3,300 square foot in northern Indiana. Um, for a whole year, I did the research, I um, developed all the content for the website, I picked out, it was a build out, so I picked out all the colors, I did all of the design with the um, architecture for the building company. Um, so all of that work, from the marketing plan, to the logo, to the website, to the content, to our branding, to our flyers, to social media, you know, like, how did I do all of that? And then once the business got open, we were right out of the gates, like really successful. I had to line out the door the first weekend. Um, in year three, I started a yoga school. Somebody asked me about that yesterday. They're like, well, how did you do it? Isn't there a national? Yes, there's a national protocol to follow. It's called the Yoga Alliance. And I reached out to them. There are standards that you have to abide by, things that you have to have in your school, and they have to approve your program. So I developed the curriculum. It took me about nine months to, to create a manual. Um, I researched, I studied again, once again, pouring myself into the buildup of this yoga school and um, submitted the curriculum. There was um, some small adjustments that I needed to make, but then the school got approved and then boom, there's a nationally accredited yoga school that was in tandem with my yoga studio. However, the yoga school is mine. It's my intellectual property. It's not it's my creation. It can um, go with me wherever I go. If I want to move to um, Italy and have a yoga school that is accredited in the United States, I can do that. So the accreditation works only in the United States because it's the Yoga Alliance of the United States. So how did I do that? And so today I want to talk to you about your own goals and what you want and really what you need to do mentally. And I'm going to start it off today by bringing out a quote from the Bible. And actually, I haven't had a chance to look this up yet. So I'm going to look this up right now as we're sitting here together. And hang on one second. I think it's James. Yeah, it's James 1.8 in the Bible. And it says, I love this because when I first saw this, I was like, oh, my God, is that not true? And it's not just true for men, it's true for women. Because we, in the Bible, we are the man of the earth, men and women of the earth. It says, ready? A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. That's James 1.8. So 
A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. What does that mean? So that means, first and foremost, let's look at this for love. Let's look at this in terms of relationships. If somebody is on the fence about a relationship, they are double-minded, they are unstable, they don't know what they want, they are unsure of themselves, that is hardly anyone you want to commit to, okay? Let's look at this in terms of having, uh, and biblically, like God says, they have no other gods before me. If you are confused about, you know, your spirituality, then you're going to be a little bit unstable. You're going to be unsure of yourself when it comes to really having a strong value and, and serving something, okay? Um, let's say you're on the fence about your job. You like working somewhere, but you really want to be an, um, an entrepreneur, but you don't really know exactly which one to do. You can't quite quit your day job yet because you have an, you want to be an entrepreneur. Well, that's you're still unstable because you're, you're kind of double focused here. So that one's a little bit more challenging and there's a strategy in that. And when you have a day job and you want to do something different, you've got to really set yourself up to win. You've got to know exactly when you're going to pour into your other venture and you've got to eliminate distractions. And you need to go all in when you can, because there's so many things in these days that you can, you know, pour your attention into, whether it be um, social media, TV, workouts, kids, um, your yard work, you know, there's so many different things that you really got to determine where you're going to focus and what you want. So the number one thing that you need to do in everything that you do is know exactly what you want. Know exactly what you want when it comes to your bank account. How do you want it to be? How do you want it to feel? Okay? How do you want to feel? That's the key. Where do you, ladies, do you want to be independently independent on your own, wealthy, outside of any man's support? You have to know what you want. You cannot be on the fence by saying, I want to be taken care of, but I also want to have my own money. You're putting out a you're putting out a, a wobble. Like the universe doesn't know what to give you if you don't know exactly what you want. Now, you can have your own money and be super independent and super strong, but also still would love to have a relationship with somebody who's committed, an honorable man, but you kind of want your own financial freedom, your own money coming in so that you don't have to rely on someone. Perfect. And there are some people out there who absolutely want to be taken care of. They don't want to work. They want to stay home. They want to raise the kids or they really just want to be taken care of. It's not even about the kids. You just got to know what you want. When you know what you want, then you put your energy into receiving that thing. But if you're unsure, it's time to get out a piece of paper and start to figure out exactly what you want how you want it to feel, and move into that direction. Um, the second thing is, I got my notes here, set the plan. Set a plan of action. And in yesterday's video and um, in the goals worksheet, it's literally asking you, write down your goal, what, and then write down what you're willing to do, and then eliminate the distractions or end the things that you know you need to end. You know, and I want to just say that Okay, there's that. That's a strategy. That's a formula. That's a process to follow. It's like you've got your navigation system in your car. You're starting off at home. You know you want to go to wherever you want to go to. Say it's Florida. You're going to have stops along the way, but you know exactly where you're going. Okay? And if you are, um, you know, unsure about where you're going or you want to go over here and then you want to go over there, it's going to take you a lot longer of time. So it's important for you to just know the chart, chart your trajectory and know where you're headed. But here's the other thing that gets in the way of most people. It's their mindset and their belief system and old patterns, old ways of thinking that have become patterns. For example, you might say that you're a positive person and you're optimistic but in one situation of your life, you're still playing the victim of a situation. And it's important to take a look at that because if you're playing the victim at all, anywhere, then you're not the one in control 
you're not the one choosing your life. You're not the one thinking that you are empowered enough to make the decisions for yourself. You literally still think, even if it's just that one area of your life, that you're a victim to somebody else's poor decision making. Maybe somebody hurt you. But you actually have to look at your side of the road and, and ask yourself, did that person play the role that I assigned to them? Because did I expect something like that from this person? So really, a lot of the times, we're getting in our own way with the way that we look at things. So honestly, the best thing that you can do is get really real with yourself. Um, one of the things in the path of yoga that really changed my life is understanding your own expectations and then unattaching from the outcomes. That's key because let's say you have a desire to be in a committed partnership, but your belief system is that all men, ladies, this may be for you, that all men cannot be trusted. Men, maybe that's for you. Maybe you desire a really strong, independent woman that you can love and take care of, but your belief system is that, um, I don't know, I don't know, I don't really know, like that women are can't be trusted or that women are just out to get married or women are just out for your money. Like you have those belief systems. You have to get out a piece of paper. You have to write down exactly what you want, what you want, what you're willing to give to a situation, what your expectations are, what your attachments are, and you need to figure out exactly why your life is happening the way that it is. Okay? Um, this is all key because if you have a goal for something and you're actually uh, internally, your belief system is not in alignment with that goal, you are not going to hit it. You are going to self sabotage every single time. Every time. So, now, once you have this, all of this written down, and you really get clear with yourself, what I want you to do next is eliminate the distractions. And my goals worksheet really talks about this, but you've got to start eliminating these distractions. You've got to start looking at your life where you are giving too much of yourself and you're not getting a return on your investment. You have to honor yourself. Where are you giving too much and not getting anything back? Now, Here's the thing. Do you need to have a tough conversation with love? Do you need to honor yourself a little bit more by showing up to a table with somebody and saying, hey, look, I need to have a conversation with you. You know, I, I really like you um, and I, I want to be friends with you, but I, I don't want what you want. Do you need to do this? Or maybe it's like, okay, let me just, let me just stay with that one for a second. Because here's the thing, you guys, you got to be careful with yourself and you know, you need to be careful with the hearts of other people because like, let's say this is about a relationship and you want to be, so you know, somebody wants to be with you, but you don't want to be with them. Here's what I want you to do in that scenario. A, look at your expectations. B, look at your patterns. Are you playing out a pattern? C, have a tough conversation, honor yourself, be real with yourself and what you want and believe you can have it, settle for nothing less than that. But the thing is, here's what I, my biggest thing is, connection and communication are absolutely everything in a relationship. And if you do not have both, you don't have either. If you can't communicate with somebody, you have no connection. And if you have connection and you can't communicate, you're not going to go very far. You're going to get tripped up on dysfunctional, uh, unspoken expectations. Okay? So get real with yourself. Chart your course. Know what you want. Know what you're willing to do. Eliminate the distractions. You know that there's, there's people in your life that you're going nowhere with. Those are called necessary endings. Start surrounding yourself with people that can uplift you, that are actually a couple levels above where you're at. Put yourself in that environment so that you can be inspired by them, so that you can learn from them, so you can see how they live their life. 
so you can see what kind of boundaries they have, so you can see what kind of standards they have for their life. Are they the kind of person that doesn't drink? How come? Why not? What does that do for them? That, you know, are they the kind of person who absolutely does not meet with anybody outside of their schedule because they're the one in charge of their schedule and their life? Okay, so put yourself in the environment with people who are a couple octaves above you and are living the life that you want to live. Find a way to get in the room with those people, whether it's putting yourself in a convention, um, a conference, um, signing up for a mastermind group. Put yourself in the room with those people and start to learn the behavior patterns of those people. The people who you're really not growing with, it's not, like I said this yesterday on the live, you don't have to be mean to people. You don't have to like completely cut people out, but you can just refocus your time and your energy on something else that is for you and the, the direction that you want to go. All right. The most important thing is to really do the work I just said about your expectations and your attachments because your attachments and your beliefs are holding you back in areas you don't even understand. So the reason I know this so well is because I did a whole year. I eliminated dating. I am a yoga teacher already. I'm meditating all of the time and doing yoga every day. So my level of self introspection was really strong anyways. But this amplified it to a whole new level because I eliminated just, <laughs> this is awful to say, but the riffraff of dating. Like, I just eliminated it. Like, it was just a waste of time. I, I don't want to waste my time. My time's important. I'm creating businesses. I'm creating jobs. I'm writing books. I don't, I'm not here to waste my time at all on a date that may or may not go somewhere. Like, it could be fun, yeah, but also I have a kid I'd rather have fun with. You know, I only have him for a certain amount of time while he's under my roof. So my priorities are right in order. My kid, my house, my body, my business. Boom. Now, if a man ends up fitting into my life, it's because the universe wanted it to happen. But I have no desire to search for anything. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly how it happened for me. I have phenomenal connections in my life. Phenomenal relationships with people that are amazing because they fit, I fit in their life, and they fit in my life, in the groove, and it just works. Now, there are things that a lot of the times that we do have to release our own attachments to the way we want things and be open to the universe blessing us in a way that we don't even expect. So we have to be open to that as well. So the thing is, start to have some, know what you want, know exactly what you're willing to do to, do to get it, Eliminate the distractions. Have some high, high standards for yourself. Yourself. You can only control you. You can't control your wife. You cannot control your husband. You cannot control their standards. You're the one who has to set your own standards. I set the standards. My son observes and he follows, which is beautiful. I've never had to harp on him to work out. He just does it. So have high standards and have high boundaries with those standards. Because when you start lowering the bar on the people in your life, you're not going to be happy. You're just not. You're going to, it's going to affect you in some serious ways. When you start lowering the bar on how you expect, you know, your life to be going. And like, you can't control how other people treat you, but you can always control your own reaction. So you guys, I know that this is phenomenal. This is huge information that's going to help you. You just got to do it. Okay. So today is Tuesday. It is day number three. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your hearts. Thank you for sharing this. I'm so grateful for all of you. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to stay on for another moment. Just kind of talk about some of the things that I have going on with my businesses. So. For those of you who, who don't know, I've got Figure Fit. It's an online health and wellness program that helps people work out. There's workouts, there's videos. It's all right there. You can do it from your home or you can even do it at a gym. You just sit and watch about eight videos. Um, there's three workouts per week. You watch about eight videos and then you go do the workout. I help you with nutrition. I help you with yoga, meditation, mindset, planning, goal setting. This book is really based on that uh, program. 
And this book is the why behind the program and why it works and how it worked for me and how it's worked for hundreds of other people. Right now we're enrolling in the 90 day transformation challenge. And you know, there's, there's people who like a challenge and then there's people who um, like to do things a little bit more lackadaisical. I would say that your best results, far hands down, bar none, is going to be to enter yourself into a challenge Put the challenge date on your calendar. I'm starting today, and here's the day I'm ending. I'm taking my before photo. I'm not going to be afraid. I want to change. And this isn't just about body. This is about your life. This is about your habits. This is about the way you show up for yourself. Like, everyone is so, so weird about, like, the body and getting abs or body image. Like, yes, that's great. You know, if you want that, good for you. I do. Who cares? But you know what I want even more? A lifestyle that helps me with my stress. A lifestyle that helps me be healthy. Um, a lifestyle that's easy to follow. That's the most important part that I can actually do, right? Because if you can't follow it, you can't do it. It's pointless. So I built this program for a single mom who's busy, who, who's also an entrepreneur, me. So anybody out there who wants to have a killer workout, who wants to understand nutrition, who maybe has some high stress in their life and they need some meditation or some mindset coaching, maybe it's affirmations, a way to like reframe something in your life. That's what this pro that's what the 90 day challenge is all about. If you read the testimonies of my program, it's never about the end weight or the goal or the abs. It's never about that. It's about being healthier, being happier. And the byproduct is always the body. Okay. So I got my dog over here. She's digging in. Cassie, what are you doing? Cassie, what are you doing? Cassie, what are you doing? She probably found a chipmunk. So you guys, the byproduct's always the body. It's it's it. That's that's like the most important thing for you is to have these high standards for yourself and have a, a pathway that you're willing to follow. Like you wake up, you got a morning routine. You know when you're going to work out that day. You know when you're going to shower that day. You know when you're going to connect with your loved ones that day. You know when you're going to work out that day on your dream. Not your job, not your boss, not your partners, yours, your dream. And you chart the course for you. You got to be your own cheerleader. You got to be in your own corner. And if you're not, you cannot expect anyone else to do this for you. You can't. You have to do this for yourself, okay? Um, and I'm passionate about this because I have had to do this myself. And I say had to, you know, let me tell you this. My son, when I got pregnant, I was not married. My son's dad originally asked me to have an abortion. And it was like shocking to me. I didn't expect that. I also didn't want to have a shotgun wedding, but I didn't expect the abortion thing. I, I thought we were going somewhere. And so that really was shocking to me. And I tell you, I contemplated it for a month, a whole month, and it was a month of hell. It was a month of torture. And this was back in 2002, and I even went to the abortion clinic. They did an ultrasound to see far, how far along I was because I was almost talked into to doing this um, because at that time, I lived in St. Louis. I, was, I already had a college degree. I was working in the corporate world. I had a great job. I was, you guys, there's no reason for me not to have a kid except the fact that I wasn't married. I was a professional working woman with a career and a salary. I could do this on my own if I wanted to. And I was but I was also I had a dream on the side. And my dream on the side was to do some acting, to move to LA and and enter into um acting. Um growing up I was always involved in theater and dance and um music. And so I was like, dude, I don't know if I can do that. Like, I just don't know. I know myself, and I just don't know if I could live with that. And so for a month, I tortured myself with, do I do it? Do I not do it? And then I ended up, he was like, just do it. Move to L.A. Just do this. Like, get out of St. Louis. Move to L.A. Pursue your dream, and then just be done with this. And so that was like, okay, I'm going to be done with him. Uh, be done with this whole life here that I've started. And, and it's just kind of like, and, and honestly, some people do that. Um, I have no judgment on that because honestly, if I would have done that, my life would be so different. I don't even know how different it would be. I can't even really contemplate that because it's not what I chose. 
Um, but it would be it would be different. Some things would have been easier. I don't know. But I went to the abortion clinic. They did an ultrasound. Um, I asked to see the screen, and she said no originally. Nowadays, I would say I don't care. It's my baby. I want to see the screen. I'm way more assertive now than I was back then. I sat. I said okay. I just kind of sat there. But that lady had a conscience, and she goes, "Oh, here." She turned the screen. She let me see. So I saw. I saw him kick right away, and I was like, "Oh, that's my baby. He's got legs." And you all seen my kid. You've seen him, right? He's a soccer player. He's a he's he's a hurdler. That boy was kicking at 12 weeks. So that moment, I decided to keep my baby, whether I was going to do it on my own or not, or I was going to have help or not. That's the moment I decided. And you guys, I'm a shark when it comes to what I want. I'm focused. I had to be. That gave me purpose and drive to forego all the other stuff because none of that stuff mattered. I had a human to raise. I had to be so focused on my own bank account, making money for us, building a home for us, um, feeding him. And I had no time for men. I had to take care of my own health, my own body. Okay. So in that situation, who wants to raise somebody else's kid? Not many people. So I've been doing this for a long time by myself. And you know what? I'm proud of it. I'm proud of what I've accomplished. I'm proud of what I've done. And honestly, I'm proud that I've stayed out of the dating scene. There's so many people I know that have been married and divorced. And I've happily watched from the sidelines. I've dated, you know, here and there. But for the most part in the last five years, I've been so focused on my work, um, achieving my goals and dreams, and really focusing on helping people. And that's me. That's where I'm at. So I just want to encourage you guys today to take this information to focus yourself. And I'm here to help you. This book is here to help you. We're going to, we're about to move into, right now we're on goals, but we're about to move into the neuroscience of your brain and how your brain compares, time travels, judges, critiques, and how that is hurting you. That's next week in the section called happy. Then we're going to go into health. Then we're going to go into fitness. And if you're here with me, I'm going to help you in ways you can't even comprehend right now. So stick with me, tag your friends below. I am, you know, so grateful for all of you that are here. And I want you on that 90 day challenge. If you, if you're ready to transform your, your habits, your workouts to know exactly what to do, this is a 90 day experience. You're going to have this on-ramp video training series that shows you exactly how to begin, exactly what to do. Um, it's fun. You're going to love it. You're going to meet new people. You're going to begin to change your habits one thing at a time. And I always say focus on just one thing because it's really the way to victory is focus on adding, changing one thing at a time. So that's right now at figurefitlife.com forward slash 90 day and sign up for that. Join the 90 day transformation. You don't have to, um, but I'd love for you to. So, you know, whether you do it or not, I'm here to help you. I know that some people can't afford $197. Some of you can, if you can do it. And if you're at that place where you are ready to change, do it. Because this is exactly what has worked for me. Um, I take busy people. I help them figure out exactly what they're doing wrong. And I put them on the chart, the course to health, fitness, and mindset. And choosing the right path. Choosing the health path. Choosing the right kind of fitness workouts. Um, and then whether you meditate, want to meditate or not, it's, it's not just that. It's about understanding your brain, your attachments, your expectations, and what you're choosing. Because what you're choosing is the biggest stressor of all. Sometimes it is if you have a limit, if you have a desire and you have a limiting belief, you're counteracting your own self. And those are the things we got to clean up. And sometimes you don't even know they're happening. But if you have a big goal that you don't yet have, it's because you have a limiting belief happening. Okay. The number one thing that helped me in my business is to do exactly what I told you today. Eliminate distractions. Know exactly what you want. Write down what you're willing to do. Write down what you have to eliminate and start doing it. Okay. So for me, back in the day, it was... I wasn't working out consistently. I knew I needed to work out consistently. That's what I was willing to do. 
what I needed to eliminate was um, overworking. And it was also eating on the fly. Like when you're cooking, snacking, I had to eliminate that. I was like, no, I'm going to make a meal and I'm going to sit down. So that was just, just an example. Um, for my business, when I had my yoga, when I started my yoga school, my son had just left. So long story, read the book. It's all in here. My son left, um, when he was turning 10 to go live with his dad for that year to, to have some time with his dad. I dove into my business. I dove into creating a business and I had the opportunity to date or the opportunity to build another business. And I eliminated the distractions of dating and I focused on building a business. So this is what I want for you to do is just these things, okay? You guys, I'm so thankful for you that you're here. The 90 day transformation is enrolling and I have to say this too, I have a yoga school, it's still here. And we're enrolling for the fall yoga teacher training program at solaceyogaschool.com. So if you're interested in learning the path of yoga, and you're really learning, interested in learning how your attachment affects you. Um, and, and kind of this like Eastern wisdom, whether it be, you know, it's kind of yoga kind of rubs against Buddhism. They're very similar in nature. I would love to have you in this program. Um, it's phenomenal and it will change your life in ways that you cannot even fathom. Um, whether you're super spiritual or whether you're into fitness or even the yoga poses, there's going to be areas that open up into in your mind that you're not even like, you're like, Oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. Um, and it's going to like rock your world in ways you don't even understand because honestly, you're all living the path of yoga, whether you realize it. And it's not about the poses. Those are just a way to tune you in to this instrument, your holy home, this body that God gave you. God gave you this body. God gave you a conscience. God gave you a spirit. God gave you the ability to hear and to speak and to do. So how do you hone all that? How do you really tune in when you need it the most? Yoga was the number one thing that helped me with that. Um, you know, it's like, I'm not going to go into it here, but you guys, if you're interested, check that page out. It's solaceyogaschool.com. We're enrolling in the 90-day transformation. I'm sorry, the the fall yoga teacher training. It's called a registered yoga teacher training program. It's a 200-hour program. You're not meeting with me for a full 200 hours, but the program requires 200 hours for you to be nationally accredited with the Yoga Alliance. And you'll be, once you graduate from my program, you'll have the eligibility to um to give your certificate to the Yoga Alliance to become a registered yoga teacher. It's fantastic. Those are the people who are have really done the training on not just teaching the yoga poses, but creating a safe space, understanding ethics, understanding the entire path of yoga, yoga philosophy, um, the anatomy of the body, the physiology of the body, the energy system, the chakra centers, and I, since I have a nutrition science undergraduate degree, I teach that as well um, on a limited scale because it's, a, it's an elective course. But um, it's, it's a phenomenal course. I'd love to have you in it. We're enrolling right now. The early bird discount ends June 21st. So you can email us at info at Solace Yoga School. If you're really interested, there's a way to save $1,000 on your enrollment by signing up with the early bird special and doing one small social media um, like drive that, we're, that we have, um, sharing, telling the world that you're doing the school's program, you're excited about becoming a yoga teacher. We send you, you tell us you did it, we send you the code, you save $1,000 off of your enrollment. It's phenomenal. Then after that, you can make payments or you can choose to pay in full. Totally up to you. So you guys, thank you so much for being here today. I'm grateful for you all. Let me know if you have any questions. Be back here tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. for um, another day of goals. A lot of this is coming based on some people that, you know, they're reaching out to me. I'm hearing some stories from people. And I want to be here to support you and help you on your journey. So I'm so grateful for you all. And um, I just want you to know one thing, that you're valuable. And you are chosen. And you are loved. These are important things to tell yourself.
but it's the most important thing is to remember that it's up to you to choose yourself, right? It's up to you. Say hi to Cassie. Cassie, say bye. All right, guys. Bye. Have a great day.